Stephen Speak, a podcast about everything and nothing. Don't forget to subscribe. Episode number seven. Well, that was a different intro. Um, trying things out, you know, trying to mix it up a bit for you all. Um, <laughs> so you don't get bored of me. I, 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 I don't get bored of me. I, I, well, it'd be a bad thing if I did, really. Listen to me. Uh, you see, you only hear the things that come out of my mouth. That's the worry. Uh, okay, so episode seven. Um, okay, today's episode. I've, I've, I've got like a little mood board next to me, and I, I very actually rarely look at it. Um, but I am today, and there's, there's two things that have, that have, have jumped out at me. And um, number one is garage, and number two is labeling machine. Yes, I know. And anyone that knows me knows I love a labeler. So we'll start with garage, and we'll that, that will lead naturally, I would presume, into label making. Um, okay, so garage. Everyone thinks garages are like a thing to shove stuff and 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 a place to put your car or your motorbike or or, or whatever. Really, I suppose it's just it's a thing, isn't it? It's, it's like a storage. What it's like a it's like a houses. It's like a houses houses. A houses mini warehouse. Does that even make sense? A house, a houses mini warehouse. Houses mini warehouse. It's a warehouse for your house, isn't it? Really. Um, ignore that previous bit. It didn't sound right in my head. Maybe it does sound right in reality. I don't know. Anyway, and yeah, it's like some people use them literally as a store. Store all my shit in. A bit like your, a bit like your loft or your attic. Um, and there's very few people I think that have them fully organised. I mean. I go into my loft and it's and it's reasonably well organized, but there's still things up there that I go, huh, that's where that is, or I thought I threw that away, or why the hell have I, why the hell have I kept that? You know, and we all do that, don't we? Um, and I think some people's garages are like that. Um, mine, mine isn't. My, mine's. I'm not going to say mine's really tidy at the moment. It's it's always a work in progress with me, um, because it takes me a long to organize stuff. That I get new stuff and then it just throws me out and I have to restart again. Kind of like what I'm like with Lego. And that uh, episode is coming uh, about, yeah, I'm looking at it now and it just baffles me how I'm going to sort it Um, and how and and in what order and and the fact that I already know that I've got things to take apart and add to it. Anyway, enough of Lego. It's not about Lego, Stephen. This is about garages and and labelling. And it makes me smile when I say that because... um, there's 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 things in the world that'll just make you smile and and you, you don't really have a reason for it let's say like you just know that there's it's something that resonates with you and and you feel good about and you um i don't know it just just brings you unbridled joy and for me having my own garage was was a massive massive point in my life that I was just so happy like to the point that I cr- I cried when I got my garage um and I don't I don't know if I've told Sarah that I don't tell Sarah quite a lot of things and I feel like that um she might leave me <laughs> I don't know if she wouldn't lie but you know um I, don't, I think some of the things I do I think are a bit weird so I, I just keep them to myself sometimes um crying's not weird obviously it just you know the things I get weird about i mean like the things i will cry about and i'll i'll use an example in a minute i'll, I'll i'm gonna make a note my god <laughs> i'm making notes about things i want to talk about what's going on uh i'm just gonna make a note about brush garage brush this will become clear if i remember to refer back to it okay so yes um yeah i've never had a garage before we had one on my old house when i where i grew up but it was my dad's garage so i had my push bike and stuff in there um and he he used to very rarely let me put my motorbike in there because uh, he's mean um but my dad my dad's garage was actually reasonably tidy it it, it went through phases where it get progressively messy and then he'd just rip everything out of it one summer and be like right we're having garage tidy up day today it's gonna be a nice day and he'd literally get everything out I've, I've just realized that's where probably where my tidying technique comes from. Because that's exactly how I tidy. I have to see the space, and then I put everything back in. But when it goes back in, my God, is it tidy? And do you know where everything is? It's probably started partly like that anyway. Um, it's even in a mess, I know where things are. Um, I kind of have like a weird photographic memory for things. Because there's a logic to, even if it looks messy, there's, there's kind of a logic to it. 
So there'll be a pile of things related to a certain topic. Anyway, I digress. Kind of. Um, garages, yeah. So the house that I first moved into was a little terraced house and didn't have a garage. Um, I probably could have afforded a house with a garage, but I didn't want to overstretch myself. So I, I made do with like a little terraced house with a little yard, and I thought, you know, I'll put my motorbike in the back and make a little shelter for it, and it'll be fine. Put a gazebo up or something. Uh, I don't really need like a load of tools and blah, 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 blah. So I used to keep my tools in my house and like an understairs cupboard, um, which was annoying. Uh, but it worked. It worked for me. Um, but the stipulation when, when me and Sarah got together was like one of the only things I said to her was like I've lived alone for 12 years. Uh, I have like a man cave kind of thing upstairs. So I, I'd like to keep my cave if possible. And I need a garage that's not negotiable the the man cave thing probably could have been negotiated but the the the, the garage thing was n- was literally non-negotiable i needed a garage i i, I want i wanted to have my it, f- mainly because i wanted somewhere to put my tools and a little space for myself and i also wanted somewhere to put my motorbike uh to make my insurance cheaper and just to keep it out of the rain all the time you know um it used to really make me make me devastated like i used to keep keep my bikes clean and tidy and use them a lot uh, and then when you'd see like little bits of rust on them and stuff like that, you'd be like, oh God, if it was in a garage, I could dry it off and it'd stay dry and uh, heated floors and, <laughs> you know, and, and, and proper tuck it in at night and, and, and make sure it was all right. And um, so partly it was that, but partly it was so I could like basically have a little collection of tools and have a little workshop. And that is still, that is still what I'm trying to get the garage sorted to at the moment. But I think the workshop might be kind of outside, but I'll come to that. Um, yeah, so when we, when we bought this house, um, again, it wasn't the most ideal house. I would have preferred a larger garage. It's kind of like a, it's like a single. You could probably get like a car in it, and that's literally it. Um, but it's good enough for my motorbike. Uh, well, potentially two motorbikes because I've got one that's still outside, which I need to do a lot of work to, and it makes me cringe that I've let it go to wreck and ruin. And I just hope it's salvageable. But I, I will discuss that. There's gonna there's gonna be an episode uh, in July. Uh, to celebrate the the twelfth anniversary of my motorcycle charity ride, the furthest points tour, uh, so there'll probably be like a, a featured episode, maybe a bonus episode as well, where I where I talk through the the video that I made, the little documentary I made, uh, which was my version of the long way round, uh, but on a budget. Yes, yeah, so we bought the house we, we've got now, and and in fairness, we 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 did a lot of work to this house, so we we needed somewhere that uh, we both could afford, and. And I, we needed somewhere, let's face it, I could afford on my own should anything happen to Sarah because of her illness. So we, we had to make sacrifices in the, in, in the fact of that. And we, we also didn't mind a bit of a challenge of doing somewhere up. So we got this place a little bit cheaper. Um, and it, it ticked all the boxes for us. It had enough bedrooms. Um, we knew we could make a downstairs toilet. There was already a downstairs toilet. But we knew we could move it. We knew we could make the, the layout slightly different to work for us. And it had a garage that we didn't have to build or or add on to later on um and a nice little garden so it takes all the boxes so and also if if anything god forbid happened to sarah while we were living here i could afford to live here on on my own uh yeah horrible thought to have when you when you looking at looking at buying somewhere but that that's the reality of of our relationship um but the, the day we moved in um i, I I had all my stuff for my old house in storage, and and I I went and got it. we we moved in, looked at the place, had a cup of tea, and we were really happy and stuff, and and was, was super super pleased. So I I I think it was like the next day, it might have even been that same day actually, because it probably would be the same day knowing me, because I'm super impatient with things. Um, but I I wanted to go and get some of the tools out of storage and 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 start arranging them in the garage, you know, because I needed to do some a lot of DIY. So I wanted to make sure they were there. So I made sure the locks were okay on the garage and put a bit of shelving up there was already a bit of shelving there but i rearranged it a little bit brought some shelving from storage and um yeah put put some of my tools up and i must admit it was so satisfying and this this is the thing like about little pleasures in life you know it was so satisfying to to put my my drill on the wall uh in its case and and, and put my circular saw up and my, my hammer drill and and my sanders and all this and and and, and and have them arranged and have them to hand and and not scurried away somewhere, you know, in the back of a wardrobe or in the back of my understairs cupboard and and um it yeah, it was just it just made me so happy. And then 
my motorbike was being stored across the road. One of Sarah's friends was was looking after my motorbike, so I went and got that, and I wheeled it across the road and put it in the garage. And it was out of the rain and out of the elements, and and I was just like, oh my god, my bike's like like dry, like and yeah, it was uh, stood in the middle of my garage looking at my stuff. Um, it was it was kind of like a sense of pride that you know I've I've upgraded where I'm living. You know, I'm still relatively young, and I've I've got somewhere nice like this. And I've got my garage now, and what you know, it was kind of like, oh, like, what can I do in my garage? Like, all the all the wondrous things I can do here, and um, yeah, uh, it get, and again, it gets me emotional thinking of it. And I'm, 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 I am one of these people. I can be quite stoic, and, and I can be quite like emotionless, like to probably to the extreme, if I'm honest with you. Um, but for certain things, I can't hold it in, and this is this is one of them. Like it's. Like it's just on my little space. It's my little, and the same with my my, my cave that I'm sat in sat in right now. You know, um, I enjoy the things that I do, and that sounds weird. Uh, but it's, it's I've said I've said this before in episodes. It's hard for me to admit that I need to invest time in myself, and and I sit in this room, and it's and it, this room is probably like an external. Um, a view of my brain and the fact that this is the stuff I like uh, but it's all also a bit chaotic uh, but it's my chaotic and it's nice and it, and it calms me I think some people would come in this room and go wow there's a lot of stuff and a lot of different stuff in here but this room is so soothing to me and unfortunately the garage is a little bit like that right now um, I've been trying to sort it out I, I when we first moved in we had the kitchen to go out of the house and I immediately transplanted all the carcasses, or most of the carcasses, carcasses straight into the garage to give me more space. And that was, again, another one of them moments where, you know, I'm moving all my stuff around and tidying it all, and I've got work surface space and blah, blah, blah. But you accumulate things over the years, and things get thrown in there, and uh, I'm try, still trying to figure out what I'm going to do, and then work gets in the way, and, uh, and it's years later, and uh, it's still not done. But, um, <laughs> but I, last year I took out the kitchen carcasses because... As good as they were for large, volumatic storage space, I couldn't get to everything. And I, I love Adam Savage. Again, I think I've mentioned him before. And, and he always talks about like first, um, first order retrievability. So things that you would use a lot should be just to hand. Uh, so they should either be on your person or they should be relatively close to what you're working on. So you don't have to waste time. And also... Like, why would you hide a tool away that you use regularly? So if you regularly use a claw hammer, why would that be at the back of a cupboard? If you regularly use your pen to mark something up, why isn't that on your overalls or in your in your pocket? Um, and it makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Uh, and I do recommend uh, Adam Savage's book to anyone, um, really. Just even if you're not a maker or anything, just he's he's a very clever guy. Um yeah, so, so the dream would be for me in my garage. For me in my garage. Um, <laughs> sounds so bizarre to me. Um, is to have my motorbikes in there nice and safe and to have all my things organised and still have a little bit of room to, to, to play kind of thing. And I'm, I'm getting there slowly. Um, I'm waiting for a couple of summer days. And I think if I get a couple of good days in the summer, uh, either after work or at weekends... Um, I think maybe like a week or so of tidying it and organising, we'll, we'll get it sorted. Um, I, what I did last year was I ordered some metal shelving. So I took took all the carcasses out of the garage um, and I ordered these metal shelving units um, and then I mounted them on casters. Because what I, think, what I, like, I thought, like about Adam Savage's setup is a lot of the things he has are on wheels. So when he's at his workbench he can wheel the things across. So he can wheel like a box of tools or a box of um like he, he or, or or things that are movable. So he has like a little movable soldering kit and uh a little movable um section of screwdrivers and all this. So they're all on trolleys and things. So I thought that's really good because you can just shove it back where you want it. And because it's all movable, you can actually hide stuff because you just it's easy to just move something out of the way to get to something else. So I bought these four um then the five or six shelved, like galvanized metal um, shelving units, and I went and bought some heavy duty casters, 
and bodged together some some wheels for it. Like I basically bodged the wheels onto the bottom of it. So I bought some 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 wood and and cut it and then screwed the wood into the metal and then mounted the 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 wheels to the bottom of that. So all four shelvers now are on these casters, which actually elevates them off the floor, which allows you, if you wanted to, you could shove something underneath them now. Um, and it's made a massive difference it's because it's literally condensed everything onto these shelves. And don't get me wrong, they are super messy at the moment because I've literally just filled them with crap and just shoved them in the garage. Um, and what I need to do in the summer when I get some nice days is to wheel them all out, empty them off, and then stack them back in order of what I want things to be and um once i do that the garage should be look should look superb and there should be quite a bit of empty space um but the idea eventually i think is is to keep to maintain that empty space and not to fill it um and then again so i can move stuff around in there and then to actually have like a gazebo or or, or something outside that i can erect and work underneath it as like an extension of the garage um, and I think that is something that um, would would really help actually because I do have a big shed as well now. I, like, I think was it last year we got the shed. I think it was last year we got the shed. Was it? <sighs> Time is weird at the moment. Um, maybe in the year before actually. No, because no, it would be last year. Let's say last year <laughs> for the benefit of the argument. Um, and that's quite a large shed. Uh, so that made a lot of space in the garage because what the problem with my garage was. I've always foreseen my garage as be a workspace area for my tools, so like hand tools and stuff like that, and like crafting tools and um, ho- you know, like hobbyist stuff, um, and my motorbike, and that that's what I wanted in there. But unfortunately, because we do have a garden, we've also got gardening stuff. Whereas for me in my brain, that that shed stuff, that 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 is the stuff that goes in the shed. So I moved quite a lot of stuff in. I had a lot of spare wood as well, so I, my my garage was was full of spare wood and and piping and and spe- just random spare materials and, and all the gardening stuff. And, and I managed to, when I was doing my garage up, uh, and there's still stuff in the in the shed that I need to move back in, actually. Um, but we got the shed, and I, I didn't put anything in there. Because one of the worst things you can do is if you're trying to, like, sort of space out, is to actually fill it with crap first. Because, firstly, it'll put you off doing anything. And, secondly, you've got to move it all to do the stuff. So the best thing to do is, um, is just... Do what you need to do first. So I saved the work surface from my garage and put it in the shed. So there is a big work surface at the back. So like for potting plants or or whatever. And I moved a couple of my desktop tools in there. So I've got a um, a grinding tool to sharpen your tools. And I thought, well, actually, that's probably going to be more useful in the in in the shed for for one thing because like sharpening gardening tools because the stuff that I would maybe use normally would probably wouldn't need sharpening that often. So um, I'm going to get power hooked eventually to the shed but even if it's just like a big long extension cable just so i can use these tools uh, and i put a couple of other things in there that i don't use very often like my pillar drill and stuff which is movable so i can take it back to the garage once it's clear um and my idea as well is to the all these desk mount tools i think i'm going to mount them all to their own to their own piece of wood so then i can then clamp it to the workbench so they're all stable and uh, that's something I, I thought of the other day actually uh, so apart from that, in the in the garret in the shed, it's just I literally went in there and put shelving up and and hooks on the walls, uh, measured it all out for all my different gardening tools, and um, I got a big bracket on the wall to to store my long pieces of my long lengths of wood and 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 off cuts and stuff like this, and and so it's looking really tidy in there actually. I mean, there's still work to be done. I've thrown a few things in there, but yeah, it's 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 got garden stuff in. It's got a few chairs in, and all the garden rakes and and stuff like that and and it's organized and it's out of the garage which is the best thing um because the garage shouldn't be that space but i i, I go and sit in the garage like it, it's it's a bad place to be it's kind of like my in this in this sense it's kind of like my cave because I'll, I'll come into this room and it, it either makes me super creative or i i get super relaxed and just watch telly because i i'm comforted by all my things and it it kind of makes me um lethargic weirdly um i think it's because i'm on edge quite a lot um not and i I don't know whether people pick this up but i i am quite anxious in my own way a lot of the time um 
because I, I I always have the thing of I want to help I want to help people and I, I and I sacrifice myself for that sacrifice my own like well being in a, in a sense so I'm always kind of on edge and I always want to do my best so that makes me on edge as well because I'm always striving to 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 do the best at whatever I'm putting my mind to which which is is like a double thing for me so when I get motivated I'm super motivated but when I'm I'm not motivated I can I can be quite uh, the thinker and I'll just sit in my own brain um just recently this this last few days i've not wanted to be around people um for for that reason like i've I've got my room sorted out a little bit and i was i was getting like i've said before like how i get sucked into like a like a hole so i've been sorting out my lego and tidying my room a little bit and it's it's one of the things that when i start doing something it builds momentum and then that's all i want to be doing like and i don't to, i don't want to life like i i want to be in that space and that's how I've been for the last few days, uh, if I'm honest. Um, and maybe that's a reflection because we're, we're going away next week as well. So I think it might be a bit of anxiety about going away um, and 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 being out of this space. Um, but I'm, I'm the same in the garage that I'll go in there and do stuff. And then if I stop to have a break or get a drink and I, I put my camping chair out, I've got like a little, uh, it's like, it looks like a bit like a director's chair, but it's lower down with a little table on the side. And I'll, I'll find myself just sitting in there, just looking around. Um, and I still get, I still get the feeling like this is my garage. Like how, how cool is this? This is my garage. Uh, and don't get me wrong, it's not the perfect one. It needs a new roof on it, and and, it, and I'd love it to be bigger. Um, but yeah, it's mine, you know. And um, when I get it all sorted, it will be like the back cave. And this is where the label maker comes in, um, because things are going to be labelled up. Let's face it. I am Steve, and I label. Um, I've got a lot of labelling to do at the moment, actually, and it really, really made me pleased yesterday. I was sorting some Lego, and I thought, oh, you know what, I really need to do. I need to like kind of label these drawers because it was really annoying me because I was I'm splitting it all up into colours and types, and then I kept getting confused about which I'd put in which drawer, and I was like, you need labels on these drawers. And as soon as I thought about, it, I was like. Label making. I get to use my label maker. Um, I've had my label maker for ages. I bought it on a whim in, I think it was Aldi or Lidl, years and years ago. And the reason I, I was looking at one of them ones that you actually, it's like an embossed one where you put the tape in and you squeeze it, turn it to the letter and squeeze it, turn it to the letter and squeeze it. And I thought, Jesus, that would take ages. And I think that was like 20 quid. But then the electric one, with like a little QWERTY keyboard. Well, it's not even a QWERTY keyboard. It's just the alphabet on it, basically. Annoyingly, it's not in, not in QWERTY format because uh, it's like in portrait mode. This this one is. It's like a, it kind of looks like a bit like a, an oversized phaser from from Star Trek. If I'm, if I'm honest with you, a little LCD screen, and it was only about five a day. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna go for that one. And the cassettes for it are quite a lot, quite a lot more expensive, but it's it's electric, so. It's a little screen and it just prints out, and um, I, I bloody love it. I bloody love it. All these different, you can do different text and boldness and upside down text and mirrored text and oh, um, they just brought a new one out as well. And I was, I was, I was showing Sarah. I was like, look, they just brought a new, a new, the, like a fully up to date label maker, and it's like got a touch screen on it, and it oh, it's madness. But it's like two hundred and fifty quid, and I, I, as much as I love labeling, I don't need a two hundred and fifty pound label maker. However, if I win the lottery, I would be buying that sucker. Um, but yeah, I, I just love label, labeling things just because it makes it easy. Like I, I'm very much about um, not wasting time. So I, I've I've got a good memory. So I must admit, when I do tidy and and and, and sort things, I I I I feel for me, in my brain, how it works, it's quite logical. But I also like containers to look the same. So I will buy like multiple containers. They look the same, and I'm like, well. I kind of know that the thing I want is in one of them, but I can't remember which one, it, what order it's in at the time, or if they're all like screws that I've organised, like which which screw did I put where. So that's where the label maker comes in, and uh, it just gives me so much joy. If anyone's seen, like, um, if anyone's listening from work, go and look at the cupboard in my in my old office in Crew, uh, because I went label maker mental in there. 
basically the cupboard was an absolute mess. It was like a stationary cupboard. So I ordered loads of like the the like the it was like the cheap version of the really useful company boxes. So like the little A4 flat boxes that stack. And I ordered loads of different ones of these to, to just sort everything out. So I wanted we had like um A4 file dividers, different types of paper, different types of laminating pouches. Like all the stuff you get from office supplies, pens, pencils. We had label maker and label thing, but I brought my own label maker in because I preferred it. And um I literally you couldn't find anything in the cupboard, so it, and it was always messed up because people would go in and take stuff and then even though I tidied it, like it would get messed up pretty quickly. So I thought well, if everything's in boxes, it's harder to mess that up. You can put the boxes in the wrong place, but if the label's still, you know, so I literally spent a couple of hours one day, like putting everything in these boxes once they arrived, organizing it, label making everything, like, ugh. And it was glorious when it went back in. When I put everything back in the cupboard and it was all in order, like all sectioned, labeled, ugh, it was amazing. Um, and it really pleases me on Batman, the original series on Batman where everything's labeled, like in his, in his bat cave and like the radar's labeled radar and, and the, decipher penguins new scheme buttons labeled like you know it's it's just amazing oh maybe that's where i get it from um maybe that's why i like it so much but that's how it's going to be in the garage like i've got lots of containers for things but they're, they're opaque so you can't see what's in them so i'm gonna have to either write on them or or label make them what i have been doing actually in the garage is using a um correction pen you know the the tipex pens uh, again tip from adam savage that's what he writes on all these cupboards and it's kind of an ingenious thing really um because you can you can just wipe it off like you can scrape it off quite easily uh, and just re redo it and it's and it, if you're writing on like most things in like a garage like toolbox and stuff they're always black or red or an actual color they're very rarely white so it shows up on everything on anything so i've done that on a few things like on my uh, pp boxes yes i have special pp boxes uh, I've written on them, uh, what's in them, and uh, yeah, it pleases me. The only thing is, my writing's not that neat, so that's why I prefer label making because you know it's just super neat, it's super neat. Um, but I am quite, I'm, I'm possessive about my garage and the fact that it's my space, and and Sarah doesn't really have anything in there. Like the dog food's kept in there, and that's that's probably it. There are things we share, obviously, that are like there's there's chairs and stuff, but the majority of stuff in there is mine, and and I, I don't think she she would even ask me to like say, oh, can we put an extra freezer in there or something like that? I don't, I don't think she'd she'd she'd, I don't think she'd be uh, she'd risk asking that to be honest. Um, but I think the what the one time this is I'm, I've just noticed my note about brushing. Um, we had the the patio done, and this is this is, and I don't know if this is just just me being like possessive or. Or whether there is some sort of psychological thing here, but she let the um, the gardener, the, well, the guy that was doing our, our patio, use my brush from the garage, and uh, like this is a yard brush, so it, it was designated as a yard brush. So I'd written on on it in, in in sharpie on the bottom of it. So I had a one that was called garage brush, and one that was called garden brush, but the garden brush is just 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 to brush the garden up, you know, after I've weeded or you know done something. So. Just a just a hard brush to brush the yard up or the garage if I needed it, but mainly for the yard, hence the name. And the guy that was doing the patio was here, and he, he asked for to borrow a brush. And I've got the, they're all wooden; they're quite a nice, fancy make actually. Um, and they're all wooden, and I can't remember what it was. I think I'd gone and filled up the dog's food or something in the garage, and I hadn't been in the garage since the guy had been doing the work, and the brush was filthy. It was. There was crap in it, and it was like it was just filthy. Like the, the whole stale was just knackered, and I was just like, I came. I was like, I was, I was quite angry. I was like, what the hell's happened to my brush? And she says, well, and she was quite like not asked about it really, and like quite nonchalant. Like, well, the builder needed one, and I was just like, builder should bring his own fucking brush. Like, what are we paying him for? Are you using my bloody tools? And that was I was saying that was how I was. Like I was just like, but I was upset, and. So I was kind of quite like, it's a brush, what are you on about? But I cried. Like, it affected me that much that I, I cried because it's my, it's my brush. Like, and, and that sounds ridiculous, but like, like, 
that that the designation on that brush was to brush the yard, not for heavy uh, building work. I would have bought another brush for that, and she thought that was ridiculous. But I think she was quite surprised at how how upset I was about it, though. She was she was like, okay, calm down, and I proper got like um, hyperventilating, crying. That like that's that's how much it it did did get to me. Um, and it, I think I surprised myself, but that that's how I am with things. I always look after things, and things have a like a a designation for me. Um, and and what what for you might be oh well, it's only such and such, like it's only a brush. Is no that brush has a has a defined purpose in my brain, and and yeah, very very peculiar. Um, and I think it was also the violation of the fact he like maybe been in my garage as well, like and and I wasn't there. Like very peculiar, isn't it? Like. The the more I the more I uh, I kind of analyze myself, the more I I, I do wonder about <laughs> whether there is something else going on. Um, no, it's just I'm so I'm so happy to have a garage. To be honest, that's the, the whole episode is just about garages. This is just ridiculous. But yeah, well, you know, you get what you get with me. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's some guys out there that that feel the same. You know, that you know we all have our space and and and. I don't know. It's just, it's always been a thing for me, and I, I would love, like, I, I would love if we if we move house, I definitely want to get another house uh, that has a garage that's that's bigger than this, or, or build a bigger one. I mean, the ideal thing for me would be something you see on like these these posh houses where you see someone's got a lovely house, but but then they have like a separate house, but it isn't a house; it's a garage. And I mean, if it's anyone, if anyone's seen Jay Leno's garage, something like that, but a very small scale. So like proper like wooden floors where I can set my bike and car and stuff like that. And, and bikes really, I don't really care about cars. Um, and then like a separate proper workshop with all my proper tools, all nicely packed away. And then like a separate, like maybe mezzanine floor with a seating area and a, an arcade machine and a pool table, like a proper hangout, like, that with a bed settee maybe that even if I wanted to, I could just sleep in there. You know, um it might be worth getting into an argument if I can get if I can get a night's sleep in there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's the dream. But you know, I'm loving what I've got and I, I'm very appreciative of everything I've got and I don't take it for granted. And uh we we've all just got to make the best of what we've got and I think I'm trying to make the best of the garage I've got. And uh it, it actually it's kinda of nice to, to try and to try and do what I'm doing in the sense of I have to try and fit everything into what I've got because otherwise um, I'd be spoilt really. So it's kind of a bit of a challenge to do that as well. But uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll uh, I'll leave it there because otherwise I'm just going to ramble on about garages and, it, and it's a bit, bit pathetic really. But <laughs> thank you very much for putting up with that entire episode about garages and me label making. Um, but if you've never label make, label make old, label make old, label, label mate, what am I trying to say? If you've never made a label from a label maker, please do. It's quite uh, quite the experience, or it is for me anyway. But I'm weird. Don't take my word for it. Just do it. If you hate it, then, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you so much for listening once again. If you managed it all the way through, I, like, congratulations. Um, I hope... <laughs> next episode will be a bit more exciting um but thank you so much once again uh please you know don't forget to subscribe uh i've got a new youtube channel uh as well which hopefully by the time this one goes out all my videos and stuff should be uploaded so you can you can um listen to them on there uh, in video format and i am hoping that i may do a few uh if i can set it up i might do a few video podcasts as well So um, until next time, uh, look after yourselves and I'll speak to you soon. You've been listening to Stephen Speak Podcast. I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button.